Hi everyone, today I've got a new scrawler box to share with you. I believe it's for the month of May. Let's see what's inside. All right, so this month we have PLS watercolor palette. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure if there's watercolor on both sides. I think there's a swatch here and the watercolor is actually on this side. I'm going to have to read on it, but there's quite a few different colors. A lovely sticker. A kneaded eraser. A piece of candy. A scroll box paintbrush. I think it's a cat tong size eight. A Pentel side effects mechanical pencil, I believe. And there should be some paper as well. Scroll box paper and it's hot press 10 sheets and it's 190 GSM. It's interesting, it's hot press but it does have a, a grain to it. Oh, my fingers are dirty with the watercolor that I touched. And I just get the first page all dirty. That's okay. <laughs> and this is a print by Arlisha Yetzer. Uh, if you don't know Arlisha, she has um, a YouTube channel called Arly Bean. She does beautiful watercolor portraits. You should check her out. We've got a zine. It talks about all the supplies. Talks about Arlisha. And the scroller challenge this month is flowing figures. So I'm going to test this out and see what I can do with the supplies. I started by trying out the mechanical pencil and it's really lovely on the paper. It's a nice mechanical pencil, it works well, there's really nothing special to it. Although it's a little chunkier than the regular mechanical pencils, but it's just a mechanical pencil. Then I took out the watercolor sheets again and I was correct. There's one side that has the swatch and the color name and the other side is the actual pigment. So I swatched all the colors and they're really beautiful and very highly pigmented. I really like the selection of these colors. So it came with a selection of 12 colors and it's very generous and it seems like a little goes a long way uh, but as I was making my swatches I realized that I couldn't really pile up those papers anymore because the corner was wet. The corner where I put the water to get the pigment was wet still so if I piled them up then I would just get the back of the paper that's on top dirty with the pigment from the bottom paper. So I had to just line them all up on my desk, which takes a lot of space because they're pretty large and there are 12 of them. So I'm really wondering why these are marketed as travel supplies because 
I don't see myself doing plein air painting with those because I, I would need to spread them out and I don't have any room for that. I think a small palette of half pans, even with 12 colors, would take about as much room. Well, of course it would be thicker, but at least they're just tiny little half pans and they don't take up any room. And when I put water in one in one of the pans, I don't need to put it away so that it doesn't mess up the other ones. That and the fact that simply handling those sheets puts pigments all over your fingers and whatever you touch after that gets really dirty. So if you watch this video until the very end, you'll see what I mean by it's very messy. To fit the scroller challenge, I decided to go very loose. And for that, I didn't really plan anything. I just wanted to put a lot of water, let the watercolor do its thing, and then figure it out as I went. One of the things I like with art subscription boxes is that I can just feel free to go with the flow, experiment, and just have fun and be loose and see where it takes me. And for this portrait, I loosely used a picture of a Norwegian singer named Aurora. I just found out about her a few days ago and I really like her. She's been singing for a very long time and she's got a beautiful voice. I found this picture of a photo shoot and I thought it would be fun to just paint it. The ugly phase of this painting lasted a very, very long time and I'm not quite sure I ever got out of it. I wanted to add all sorts of colors and make it fun and see what would come out of it. So yes, it ended up being a bit muddy in the end, but I had a blast just splashing colors here and there and everywhere. And I must say, I really, really like the brush that came in the box this month. I've never tried one of those before and it's really cool because it kind of ends up being like the combination of a flat brush and a round brush where you can make pretty thick strokes, but then you can also paint very fine details with a tip because it stays super pointy. Now, what I liked about those watercolors is how some of the colors separate and you see all the different pigments in that one puddle of paint. And it's really cool. Like the yellow that I use for the hair, when I diluted it a lot with water, it looked really yellow. But if I didn't add very much water, it was more of a greenish brown. So it's really cool that you can use that for the shadows and the highlights. Now in the end, because my painting was looking pretty messy, I decided to cheat and I added some white highlights. I thought that it helped define a few details and I continued working on it a little bit off camera. I added some purple and the shadow for the hair and I think it looked really nice that way. And then a few more details here and there. Now I must say it was really not practical to paint with those sheets because I had them all lined up and I really didn't know what colors they were. I knew if I flipped them around to look at the name, uh, then my fingers would get all dirty and then I would just put some uh, pigments all over my, pa my painting or my table. So I didn't want to do that. I ended up keeping them in the same order as the swatches that I made and it ended up being easier for me that way. But I can't see myself doing that plein air, traveling with those, out of the question. So my messy painting was uh, pretty fun to paint. The supplies were great. I mean, in spite of the messy watercolor sheets, the, the, the colors, I really like the colors and if they were in pans, I might actually get some because I really liked the paint itself. So if you get this box, let me know what you thought of it and if you would actually go travel with those watercolor sheets, if you've done it before, uh, what do you think of those? I've never wanted to buy any f just for that reason because I knew that it wouldn't be practical. It never seemed practical to me and now that I've tried them, I know they're not practical. But tell me if you if you have them, if you love them, if you found a great way to use them. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you all for stopping by. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you soon with another video. But before you go, stay tuned to see a little extra footage about these watercolor sheets. So what you see here is my desk after I put away the watercolor sheets. I wanted to make sure that I clean it very well. But I couldn't see very well where it was dirty and I didn't want to use 
a dry paper towel to clean it because I didn't know if it was going to be cleaned very well. So I used a spray bottle to activate all the pigments that were left on my desk just by having those sheets of watercolor on the desk. Not touching them, just having them there. And you can see how much of a mess they made. That said, after spraying the water, it was super easy to just wipe it off. Just thought I'd show you. Bye bye. Thank you.